Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Ready Set Drone. Uh, today I'm pretty excited because I've got the MJX X600 Hexcopter, which has six blades, six motors, and uh, I haven't flown a lot of Hexcopters, so I'm kind of excited to give this one a try out. This one was $55 on Amazon.com, um, and it's supposed to be, it got very good recommendations, and it's supposed to be one of the better ones available for that price. Um, it does have a few features that look interesting, although I just have the real basic one at $55. Um, you can mount a camera. There's a camera you can get for it. And supposedly it will do FPV if you get the right software for your iOS device and install it. You use your iOS device as a, um, as a screen. Um, but what I have here is just the very basic uh, hexcopter with um, the remote and no camera. So we're going to take it out of the box, uh, put it together, take it for a spin, and see what we think. So first of all, I've already actually pulled it out because sometimes that can be a little awkward to do on camera since it is uh, usually strapped in there pretty good. It, it's packed up like such, um, your standard plastic uh, form-fitted, plastic molded piece that comes in. The uh, battery container is right here. I've also actually taken the battery out and charged it. The battery is a 7.4 volt, 700 milliamp hour battery. Um, so that would mean it's a 2S battery and it, um, it's got some pretty decent uh, weight to it. I mean, it's a little bit bigger than my SEMA X5C. By the way, I have a SEMA X5C here just for comparison's sake in terms of size. It is not a whole lot bigger, but a little bit bigger than the SEMA X5C. This one, does, neither of them have any landing gear or anything on them right now, but you kind of see that it uh, takes a little bit more space. The props look almost exactly the same as the SEMA X5C props. As a matter of fact, looking at them, I'm going to say they are. They even have the same. Um, they even have the same hole in the middle for being able to. So you can see there on the SEMA X5C, and this is on the uh, X600. The, it looks like it's the same type of screw that puts it in, but just wanted you to see the size comparison. It does have a headless mode, and it does have a return to home button. There's no GPS in this thing, but if in, in the return to home um, mode, what it does, if you're in headless, it will fly towards you. And so basically, if you, if you get lost and you can't figure out how to get it to you, you push this button and it flies back towards you when you're in headless mode. And headless mode, of course, means that no matter which way the craft is oriented, um, it's are always oriented relative to you. So in normal mode, if you spin the craft around to face you and you push the stick right, it's going to go left because that's right for it, just like stage left and stage right. Um, in headless mode, if you spin the craft around and you push the stick left, it's going to go left because in headless mode, it basically just follows the same direction that you push the stick. So like I said, I've already charged the battery. It comes with the uh, USB charger, pretty standard thing. This, this, um, Battery does have a balancing cable as well as the uh, cable that connects into it, into the copter. Has this um, area here where you put the battery in. Now one thing I'm not a big fan of is there's a screw hole and you have to use this little screwdriver that comes with it in order to open this up and get the battery out and then put the battery on the charger. It does come with a screwdriver, but I'm never a big fan of having to screw and unscrew the, the battery door in order to get the battery in and out. The remote. Same thing, has a little uh, spot for a screwdriver, a little screw there that you have to undo. This takes three AA batteries, and you do have to put the sticks on the remote, so we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I suppose if you wanted to glue it in or something, you could do that. It'd be nice if they were threaded, and you could just you know put them in there and then twist them. That would be a good thing, but that's not the case, but they're on right now. As I said, I've already put um, batteries in the radio. It's a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, pretty standard for this type of thing. It's got the two bumper buttons up here, which I'm sure are for the flips. Uh, it's got trim buttons for your right and left stick. And then the buttons down here are actually labeled for, um, for your beginner, immediate, intermediate, and advanced. So this, and this says aileron rudder. This must make it um, maybe switch the, uh, switch your controls. We'll see if that does it or not. And then there's a little dial here. I'm not sure what this does. Maybe this um, actually increases or decreases the amount of um, uh, throttle input you have. I'll find all that stuff out in a second. So it comes with some extra props. As I said, the charger, 
the screwdriver, and the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing out of the way and put the battery in. So the battery just slots in like this and this thing closes down and then it looks like what you can do is you can actually take the uh, this little hole here and put your cables through it in order to plug it all together once it's put in. So this battery's been charged fully overnight. Close that up. Drop this little tiny screw into here where it goes, which again I'm not a huge fan of, but that's just the way this one is. And after a little bit of trial and tribulation, this is in place. And now it looks like um, it looks like uh, it also has four blue LEDs and two orange or red ones. And it looks like the orange or red ones are at the rear of the craft and the four blues are in the front. So it'll help you keep oriented. And then uh, lastly, the uh, it also has an on-off switch on the top, which is a nice feature because a lot of these, you just plug it in and it automatically starts. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery into the power supply here with it off. Now actually it didn't come with any landing gear, the, the um, unless the landing gear is in with the props, but I don't see it in there with the props. So that's interesting. Either that's an oversight or, wait a minute, ah, the landing gear is on the bottom of this container. Now typically I'm not a big fan of the landing gear, and I'll bet that's what all these little screws are for, is to put the landing gear on. Um, typically I'm not a big fan of the landing gear. I feel like it's uh, just sort of makes the thing heavier and is, oh these are this is landing gear and prop guards that this comes with. So those are on the bottom as you can see from the picture of it here with the landing gear and the prop guards. I'm also not a big fan of the prop guards. Um, if you're a beginner it's probably a good idea to put them on or if you're planning to fly it indoors I would use the prop guards but for now I'm going to just leave them off because I think I'll get the most performance out of it. So the battery's been charged. The um, radio has battery in it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio on first. Then I'm going to turn the quad on. You can see the lights are blinking and now they've slowed down which is pretty standard. I'm going to run the left stick up and then down and it beeped which makes me think it's bound. Yep, it's bound. So I'm just going to hover it here inside and then we'll take it outside for a little spin and see how it does. Whoa! Alright, I promptly ran it into a, um, a light stand. <clears throat> now, the reason I ran it into a light stand is because the yaw is reversed from what I'm used to. So I'm thinking that's what this little button here is for. If I push it, it says aileron rudder. And I'm going to dial this dial to the center. Now I'm going to take it up. All right, now it's where I need it to be. Now I can see the aileron rudder. It has a lot of power. It's definitely very quick to go up and it's really stable. Now we're indoors right now, so of course uh, indoors it's going to be uh, very stable. I'm going to trim it right left just a little bit because it's drifting right. See if I can get the trim perfect and hold it right here in front of us. Might have overdone it a little bit on the aileron. Okay, forward and right. Pretty stable. Again, uh, maybe that's a feature of the six uh, propellers that make it so stable. But man, it, it, it definitely has a lot of power, man. When you give it some uh, throttle, it just wants to jump up in the air and go. It's pretty cool. So let's take it outside and take it for a spin and see how it does. Okay, so before I take it outside, I thought I'd go through the um, functions, the stick functions real quick. Uh, the top right button, this is the flip button up here, what causes it to do flips. This up here is when you're in headless mode, this one uh, actually is the one that sends it back towards you when you're in headless mode. Obviously the sticks are standard, um, however there are different stick modes and so you can actually hit this aileron rudder button and I don't know if you can see there but it's actually saying stick mode, it's changing the 
stick mode from two to four. And I don't know if you can see it, but uh, stick mode two is what you want to be in if you're a North American flyer, where the left con left stick controls the um, the throttle and the rudder, which would be your yaw, and the right stick controls the elevators and aileron, which would be your forward, backwards, left, right pitch. Um, and then this button here, when you press it, this actually changes the difficulty. Now you see that little uh, oval shaped thing. In easy mode, the oval shape is empty like that. In intermediate, the left side is full. And in, uh, in most difficult, the right side is full. So we're gonna try out all those modes and see which makes the most sense. This dial over here is the throttle limit button. So I guess when it's all the way up, you've got a lot more throttle, and when it's down, it uh, doesn't go up and down quite as fast. I did notice the thing really takes off quickly in low, um, before, and so perhaps because it was uh, turned up. So I'm gonna try it in different modes and see how it does. So we'll take it outside and take it for a flight and see how it does. Okay, so here we are outside. Um, one thing to note, when the doesn't have landing gear on it, it sits kind of low in the grass, as you can see there. So if I were to try and spin it up right there, it would hit that grass and wouldn't do too well. So you're going to want to either hand launch it or launch it off of a uh, sidewalk or something so that it doesn't have the blades fighting the grass. All right. There we go. Okay, I've got it in the air. So right now, I am flying it in... Uh... Oh, I just, I just flipped it. I am flying it in expert mode, which causes it to flip. All right, now I'm in inter intermediate mode. Um, expert mode causes it to flip when you push the stick all the way to one side. So I'll show you again if I get up here and there's a slight wind blowing towards me. Um, oh, and you can actually see now the uh, amount of throttle that I'm giving it is showing here on the on the screen so it won't flip over in expert mode or in intermediate mode it won't flip over but uh, but it does have some good pitch now I'm gonna switch it over to beginner well oh no I'm an expert now one more time now I'm in beginner mode now in beginner mode there's not a whole lot of pitch um, as is expected the yaw rate is painfully slow Switch it back to intermediate. Intermediate has a faster yaw rate and a bit more pitch so you can actually fly in the breeze. And then uh, this top right button is supposed to do the flip. There we go. So the top right button flips it in beginner and intermediate mode. As you can see, it flips pretty well, doesn't lose a lot of altitude. Um, now, uh, in expert mode, so I'll press this one more time, when you press the stick pretty hard, it flips. I'll try and stay out of the road over there. So I'm flying in intermediate, which so far is my favorite mode. And it's down. Not sure if that's because of the battery or because I just didn't give it enough throttle. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, I just didn't give it enough throttle. So now we're gonna see how this throttle rate thing does. Um, there it is with the throttle rate turned all the way up. And it really gets up when you give it some gas. It basically seems like it allows it to get to a higher power in the throttle. Now I'm gonna turn the throttle rate down. Oh yeah, and it's a lot slower. The throttle rate is at all the way to the left. And when I give it full throttle, it takes it a second to get up. When I turn the throttle rate all the way up and I give it some gas, it goes right up really quickly. So probably in the middle is a good place for the throttle rate, this little dial. It is a little bit hard to tell the orientation. The batteries, um, the, the battery pack is here in the back and I can see that. As I said, you can turn the LEDs on and off but they're pretty hard to see out here because it's pretty bright. That'd be easier if it was a little darker or if it was nighttime. But you can see I'm flipping the, bat, the LEDs on and off. So now the way you put it into headless mode is you actually set it down somewhere. 
and you hold down this top right button for two seconds and now it's blinking and it's in headless mode so since it's blinking and it's in headless mode uh, I have to hold it down again now it's not in headless mode so let's try it in headless mode okay I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up fly it I'm gonna turn the yaw and you can see even when I rotate the yaw pulling the stick towards me pulls it towards me and pulling the stick pushing the stick away from me pushes it away right is right left is left it's that's definitely headless mode I can even spin while I'm flying See, I'm yawing and, and going right at the same time. So now I'm gonna get out of headless mode. Oh, and then the other thing the headless mode is supposed to do is this top left button is supposed to fly it towards me. Now it's a little off because of the wind, but it did start coming back this way. So let's try it again. I'm gonna take it out there, take my hands. It's in headless mode. Take my hands off the stick and push this left button and here it comes toward me. And you can override it as soon as you want to because it would have flown into those trees. So it seems to work fairly well, that uh, headless mode uh, override. Now I'm going to hold the top right button down for two seconds. You hear that beep? Now it's not in headless mode. Now if I'm this way and I push forward, it goes forward. So now I'm flying it normal mode, which I prefer actually. on off switch, very nice. So just had a good chance to go out and fly the MJX 600. Um, it is fun to fly. It's definitely uh, got some power with six propellers and six motors. Um, it's a bit more stable than the little quadcopters, the little toy quadcopters. Um, maybe because it's a little bit bigger um, and also because it has six, six motors. Um, you know, I think it's just uh, inherently a little bit more stable. The headless mode works well. The, uh, the return to home on the headless mode, it basically just starts going the direction it thinks you are from it in headless mode. So it's not super accurate, but it does head your way, um, meaning that it's, you know, if, if you're totally lost and you're in headless mode, you can push that upper left button, it'll zoom in your general direction, and then hopefully you can take over control and get it. I would only use that in an emergency. Uh, the, the rates are really good. I mean, it does have a lot of variance between the beginner, intermediate, and expert modes. It flips well. It doesn't lose a lot of altitude when it flips. Uh, it looks really cool. I mean, this thing is just a cool looking, uh, cool looking quad. You know, I, I like the black especially. I just think the color looks nice. It's a matte black. It doesn't have too many cheesy decals. The LEDs are pretty bright. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. I, I think it would be a fun uh, quad to play around with. Definitely uh, this on-off switch is nice because a lot of them don't have an on-off switch. They just, you plug in and they go. Uh, it's nice because then you can plug it in, set it down on a flat surface and then turn it on so it can calibrate everything. Uh, would I recommend it for 55 bucks? Absolutely. I do wish that it had, um, didn't have these places you have to unscrew things to get the batteries in and out to recharge them, but that's just part of the deal with some of these cheap, cheaper copters. Um, I also wish that the Remote were a little bit more uh, significant, although for a cheap toy remote, this really isn't too bad. Uh, so, yes, I'd give it a thumbs up. I certainly welcome your comments, and I hope if you enjoyed this video, you'll consider subscribing to Ready, Set, Drone. I want you to fly safe, I want you to have fun, and I want you to watch the next video. Thanks for tuning in.